Top officials at the Department of Energy just announced a his history-making scientific achievement, accomplishing, albeit briefly, a decades-long quest to harness fusion, the energy that powers the sun, powers the stars. Renee Marsh has m much more detail for us on this. It's good to see you, Renee. What did we just hear from the Energy Department on this, and what does it mean for the future of clean energy? Yeah, so the scientists uh, at this Department of Energy lab in California, they have effectively figured out how to essentially bottle the sun. Uh, they were using 192 high-powered lasers to fire upon these two hydrogen atoms, the force and the heat from those lasers, fusing those atoms together, unleashing this power that replicates the conditions that we see in the sun and the stars. But on December 5th, that is when the breakthrough happened. For the very first time, this fusion process produced more energy than was used by the lasers to drive it. And that is so critical. In order for anything to be a viable energy source, the output of energy must far outweigh the input of energy used to generate it. Um, the the uh, Department of Energy Secretary uh, Jennifer Granholm saying this is one of the most impressive scientific feats of the century, and this is more than 60 years in the making. Take a listen. It took not just one generation, but generations of people pursuing this goal. And uh, it's a scientific milestone scientific energy break even to achieve this. But of course, as with all of these kinds of complex scientific undertakings, it's also an engineering marvel uh, beyond belief. And of course, Kate, you know, this is not just a big deal for the scientific community. It really is a big deal for mankind because it will have the ability to change the way not only we consume, but the way we use energy and the source of our energy for our everyday lives. Kate. Renee, thank you. Joining me now for much more on this is the Secretary of Energy, Jennifer Granholm. Thank you for being here. Secretary, what, is the miles, what does this you. milestone mean for the quest for clean energy sources? How would you describe it now? Yeah, I mean, the, the fact that we have been trying, we as a nation, we as a scientific community across the world have been trying for over 60 years to achieve what is known as ignition, which as uh, was described means that more energy came out of these reactions than were put into it. A little bit more, this is just a, this is one experiment, but it had never been achieved before. And that means that, it, that it's possible. It essentially unlocks a whole new source of clean energy. Now, you know, fusion is where two particles come together, atomic particles. These are isotopes of hydrogen. Fission is where you split an atom. And so the splitting of the atom creates nuclear waste. Uh, this, the fusion of the atom, which is why fusion has been such an important quest, creates no nuclear waste. And so if we can get this to scale, this will be an amazing endeavor to us achieving our goal of zero carbon emission power. We know it's definitely not tomorrow, but how long until you think nuclear fusion can and will power homes, power businesses? Yeah, I mean, the, the really interesting part of this, Kate, is that there's a huge amount of private sector interest in this. So there's obviously been very significant public investments. We've got 17 national labs. A good number of them are working on these solutions. But now that we are have gotten closer and closer, the private sector is also very interested in this. And so the president has a 10-year goal of getting to a commercial fusion reactor. And he announced that goal this past summer. So we're hopeful that with, you know, in a decade, we might be there. Of course, we have a goal of getting to net zero uh, economy, uh, car energy by 2050. So that would be within that time frame. Um, and but now that this breakthrough has happened, the scientists can go to work on improving the process, on making, in this particular uh, type of fusion, it was with lasers. So they would work on making the lasers more powerful. They'd work on other aspects of the actual reaction that makes it um, more powerful, more output. Uh, but you know, there's a, there's a lot more progress that's even being made in a different kind of fusion with magnets. And so it's mm -hmm. really exciting to see that both of these types of fusion are being looked at by the private sector and they have every incentive to move quickly. 
whenever this is accomplished to scale, you know, making it commercially viable, that's fantastic, of course. But here's also why time does matter, because if nations and the oil industry continue on the path with Iran, by the time fusion is commercially viable, all of the worst tipping points when it comes to the climate crisis could very well already be crossed. We could already be to the point of no return. At the same time, the president spent a good part of this past year telling oil producers like OPEC to produce more because of the other crises that we're facing around the world. So what do you do about that? Yeah, I mean, first of all, it's clear that we need to have enough power to get people to, tr in, to, to put gas in their cars and to heat their homes. That is the, the now and the reality. But we are accelerating this transition to a clean energy future. Fusion could be one of those pieces, but it's certainly not the only piece. It has huge promise, but we do have a lot of work to do. This is why accelerating all these other forms of clean energy, whether it's wind or solar or clean hydrogen um, there and electrifying transportation, all of those things that were passed in the president's agenda uh, through the Inflation Reduction Act and the bipartisan infrastructure law, those are all proceeding uh, with the pedal to the metal. Uh, the, so we're very excited about all of those two. Clearly, we have uh, figured out how to make sure that we deploy enough clean energy mm -hmm. through these incentives to cut our emissions as a nation in half by 50% and get to net zero by 2050. But we have a lot more work to make sure it's not just the United States, it's other countries as well. And so our example, both in the fusion example, as well as in all of these other technologies and policies are being looked at very seriously by other countries who also want to do their part. Just before we go, I do want to ask you about the energy assistance that's been promised by the administration to Ukraine to help repair its energy infrastructure. I believe it was $53 million announced and was promised. Where are you in getting that assistance over to Ukraine? Yeah, the assistance is really in the form of equipment to repair their electric grid, which, as you know, is being bombed on a regular basis by Russia. And so in partnering with our utilities across the nation, we've identified uh, equipment that is actually right now, as we speak, in transit uh, to Ukraine as the first uh, uh, tranche, if you will, of equipment that we are sending as a nation to help uh, to help Ukraine. Uh, the Deputy uh, Energy Secretary, Dave Turk, is in France right now. There's a big conference that is convening all of these countries to see what they can also do to help uh, donate equipment, get equipment over to Ukraine so that they can turn on their lights and power their homes during the winter. Yeah, Zelensky saying today that 800 million plus is going to be needed in order to reverse the damage done by this extensive bombing to protect them and their energy infrastructure through the winter. So much needed, and it's heading over there now. Secretary, thanks for your time.